Salutia Tutti! It's another beautiful day in Abruzzo. And today we are going to visit Pacentro, which you can see behind us. It's um, easy to spot because of its um, famous towers, three of them still standing today. Pacentro has its origins um, going way back to the 8th and 9th century, and there's quite a few nice things to see. And we're right at the bottom of a fantastic activity, aren't we? That yep. You can do here. I don't know if you can hear that noise next to us, because that is the zip line Maella, which is one of the longest zip lines in Europe. Might be the second longest in Europe. For all it we know. could be. Well, it's one <laughs> kilometre long. I know that. 200 metres high, and takes about one and a half minutes to do. And uh, I think someone's just coming in on it, or just has. But so uh, the YA, as you can see, goes up behind us and starts right up there, and then it ends here. Are you going to have a go? Now? No. Today? No, I doubt it. So here we are in the centro of uh, Pecentro. Oh, that rhymes. Centro, Pecentro. There's very few restaurants in Abruzzo that I want to go to that I haven't been to already. That is one of them. Um, and one day we will go there. When? Uh, you tell me. We think of a special occasion. I'll say that. St. Mark's Lion is here as well. I don't know what he's doing in Pecentro because he's a symbol of... Um, Venice, the Veneto region. So, um, the is um, the ancestral home to two very famous people, one of them being Madonna, the singer, the artist, and the other being Mike Pompeo, the politician, the former head of CIA. So we're just walking through the lovely little small streets at the centre of the centro. Another Borghi più belli d'Italia, and you can see why. I mean, it is stunning. Vendizzi. And there are some places for sale here, not many, because you, it's desirable. Yeah, um, so you won't find that many on the internet. I, actually, probably with most properties in Abruzzo, you have to come and visit. See. Um, there are plenty of Vendizzi, um, but they're done privately, they, you won't find them on the internet. See. And, uh, and actually, they're quite affordable here, we found. So what can you get for your money here? Um, a small, um, well I say small, <laughs> it's actually big if you compare it to something in England. 65 square metre apartment, one or two bedrooms, starting at 22,000 and not in need of refurbishment at all, which is quite amazing. Mm. Up to two or three bedrooms to around 100. Uh, also not in need of refurbishment. There's the uh, sign to show you that this is one of the Borghi Pubelia Italia, which means one of the beautiful villages of Italy. And it is very beautiful. If you look down these lovely streets and back that way, oh, look how beautiful. <laughs> and they're very lovely streets and lovely buildings, very unchanged. Yeah, I and, think um, it'd be, um, a great, well, it's a great place to holiday, that's for oh, sure. Oh, definitely. Um, great location, you're very central, so you can, I mean, you're in the mountains in no time. Is there another Vendersi? Ground floor apartment, 70 mm. square metres. Yeah. There's another Vendersi over there. So probably there is already more than I've seen on the internet that I've seen. Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the usual way. Yeah, absolutely. Where's that? Um, uh, ah, there's the building. It's a case of getting hold of some of the phone numbers. See. Si. And um, going to see for yourself. That one is um, the sculpture of Pope Celestine V, who also was ah. actually um, one of the uh, residents of Pacentro. See. Si. Yeah. Pope Celestino V. 
So that's the Vico Santa Maria Maggiore. So the church, the parish church, Santa Maria Maggiore, must be just round the corner. It is, I know, just on the left. Just round the corner here. stunning inside. Um, it dates back to the 14th and 15th century and was completed in 1603. It's rather impressive. It's um, style. If you look at some of the intricacy, it's quite late Baroque or Rococo um, period. And um, it's got the sort of uh, very traditional architecture with the three naves and then the sort of Tuscan style octagonal columns in between um, the naves. And you can definitely see by the interior of this church that this village has had great wealth. Yeah, definitely. It's quite impressive. Yeah. This is the oldest little street. It's cute, gorgeous, isn't it? Via Castello. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at this. He's rather cute. <laughs> Buongiorno. Salve. No, I shouldn't think you will then, this way. Although the inaccessibility will bring the price down a bit here. Never mind Vendizzi, actually for sale. Good Lord, in English. Uh -huh. oh, you don't see that often in Italy. what it would look like if you were trying to attack the towers. This is what you'd have to go up if you were thinking of trying to attack this place. Well, I mean, you could easily climb up Yeah, there. but not if someone's pouring boiling oil down on you or shooting arrows or cannonballs. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, a lovely fountain. It's not actually that hot today, it's great, it's finally got a little bit cooler. I think it's only 30 today compared to... 40. 40? Got to 41. Got to 41? Yeah. Yeah, but I can deal with this because it's 
lovely and cold. Oh, oh. Sorry, oh. Can you replace me with that? Oh, that's lovely and refreshing. <laughs> So we're going to go and have a little explore at this castle here in Pacentro, Castello Caldoresco, or Castello Caldoro. Um, in its current format, it um, dates back to the 10th century, but um, apparently it is the oldest or one of the oldest castles in Abruzzo and is first um, referenced in year 951. So, very ancient. It's built in a trapezoid um, architectural style and three of the four towers are still standing today. One of them we're going to go and climb up to the top of the Torre del Re. I mean, it, it, it's a fantastic place to have a castle because it's um, really strategically located at the entrance of the San Leonardo Pass which goes to Pescara. And in 1957, it was sold by the last private owners to the state. Um, and since then, they've carried out major reconstruction and renovation works to it so that it's in this current format for visitors to come and enjoy. And how much did they sell it for? Um, I think it was um, probably 10 shillings tuppence. Oh, that's cheap. So now you can see that this was built in a trapezoid form with four towers, three of which are still standing. And uh, where was the fourth? It was here. This was the fourth. We're yes. inside the fourth yes. at the moment. Okay. Or maybe it was just this, this part. Yeah, I would have thought just yeah. that bit yeah. maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, look, yeah. so uh, here we are at the top of the tower with a spectacular view of the Polino Valley here, which goes to Sulmona down there. And down there is a parish church with an enormous steeple. So, I think I, I, think I mentioned earlier the strategic position of this castle, and that's because it is at the entrance of the San Leonardo Pass which takes you to Pescara. And there point out, yeah. is the San Leonardo Pass. You see this road here? It goes around the corner and it travels up in between this hill here and the mountains in the background there up into the Maella and is one of the only routes through the torturous Maella mountains and national park which go that way. And that is a spectacular drive. And is it not, darling? Yes, it's absolutely gorgeous. And you can see the top of the zip Line Maella will be there. Um, there I'm yeah. not sure if you can no, see I, that line yeah. of what are they called? Uh, they're um, <laughs> they're balls. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> to stop helicopters and paragliders yeah. hitting them. So that's where you whiz down. Yeah. One kilometre's worth. So you can also see how close you are to Sulmona. Sulmona is down there. Uh, the centro, somewhere there, historical centro. As you can see um, behind me, there's one of the original flags that they'd used in battle. There's very little left of it now. <laughs> and uh, it's done well, you know, a few hundred years old, still flying. So uh, behind us here, you can see a medieval washing machine with a uh, medieval washerwoman at work and uh, this is where they would have come to wash all their clothes and had a meeting and this one's still working they would have all stood around the edge here please demonstrate how they would have stood around the edge with the clothes bashing them Never mind the clothes. I have been that no I know but yeah just for the purposes demonstration purposes they would have stood like Hatteras now with their clothes on the edge and they would have been bashing them clean in the water inside there. Whilst gossiping. Whilst doing lots of gossiping. Do you know that would have been a good incentive to do all this like hard work? Yeah. Find out the gossip from your neighbours. 
And if you want to see what it was like then, there's a photograph of what it was like. That's how it would have looked. This is what it would have sounded like. Oh, did he really? Oh, did you oh. see? Oh, did you see what she did down the road? Oh, yeah. you'd have been good at that. <laughs> that come, that, yeah. that, that I mean, comes I would, naturally to her. I wouldn't have been good at the washing part, but no. the gossiping part, yeah. Yeah, you're brilliant gossip. <laughs> so we've uh, had a lovely day, haven't we, in the centro? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's really gorgeous. You should definitely come and visit. Yeah. And uh, it's got lots of things to see, uh, lots of life, especially at this time of year. Um, it's very busy, lots of tourists. And a lovely place to have an aperitivo. Yeah, and if you're brave enough, give that zip line a go. Yeah, absolutely. Salute. Cheers, darling. Oh, <laughs>